In today's video, we're going to be covering the all-new SpeedDB All-in-One Flight Controller V2. Now, this is a pretty interesting flight controller for a couple reasons, and this is the first company to officially ever release a flight controller with Bluetooth built in, and they've also released the SpeedDB app, which allows you to connect to Betaflight via Bluetooth. And what this has is it has a 9-volt regulator, which is awesome, something you want. Not only that, an LC filter on the 9-volt regulator, which is something superb, we also have 5 volt and 3 volt regulators, which is something to be expected. The Bluetooth is built in in the back right here. Also, we have 16 megabyte of flash memory and it's an all-in-one flight controller. Now, an all-in-one flight controller, it has two meanings, but nowadays it's kind of dropped down to one meaning, which means just a power distribution board and also the flight controller itself all into one board. Some of these all-in-ones would have the ESCs actually also built into them, which we'll see a new one upcoming in the next couple days. However, this is just the normal all-in-one with an FC and a PDB installed. Now, what's really cool here is you can install the ESCs directly, the single ESCs to be exact. However, you can also install a 4-in-1 ESC with an all-in-one board like this, which we're going to get into in a bit. But right now, let's go over some of the specs, take a look at the board, and see how we would go about connecting it. So, let's get started. Now, first of all, let's talk about the price. The price is very attractive for the amount of things it's offering. Now, it is using an MPU 6000 gyro, which means it's not the sensitive gyro, which is great because the sensitive gyro basically has no need anymore because Betaflight is capped at 8K. So this is the gyro you really want to stick with, which is the MPU 6000, and it's less headache, especially for new people. Less sensitive, usually much better. Now, we also have 16 megabyte flash memory, which is something really great because we have no SD card expansion. And if you needed some memory for your black box log, we have that right here. On the bottom here, we have a current sensor, which can be used and can also be bypassed for 4-in-1 ESCs, which I'll explain in a bit. And we also have our LC filter area, our voltage regulators, and our Bluetooth and OSD back here. It's insane amount of things they're actually able to put on this in just a six-layer PCB board. Now, if we also take a look at the side of the board here, we also see we have edge plating, which means it's a, it's a, it's a good manufacturer without having it done because not all manufacturers can do that stuff. And uh, that's a good sign right here. So now let's talk about how we would connect this. Now, it's gonna be, there's a couple things you need to take note of here if you're using ibus or s bus they're going to connect differently if you're using normal escs and four and one escs they're also going to be connected slightly differently there's many variations which we'll cover in today's video and help you clarify how to go about doing that on such an all-in-one flight controller like this now the implementation of connecting a four and one esc on an all-in-one flight controller can also be used on a different all-in-one so overall you'll learn a thing or two here about how to connect that and which is the best way and what you will lose if you connect it the other way we'll get into that in a bit so let's get started here now first of all what you always need to do is find the arrow key so we have the arrow right here that's pointing to the front of the quadcopter where your camera would go so this would be installed in your quadcopter like this now if you wanted to install it any other way you're gonna have to do some offsets but if you don't know what you're doing just install it like this so your quadcopter can fly next thing down the line we have the power so this is where your power would go your xt xt60 would connect to we have the positive and we also have the negative now if you're heating up these pads for too long the solder will will drop down to the bottom right here because they have vias here to help improve the current flow to connect all the layers together. So keep that in mind. Don't keep the soldering iron there for too long because then it'll just all disappear and it'll be hanging on the bottom. But an easy fix is you'd have to flip this over and just hold the soldering iron right on the pads and the solder will pop back to the other side. So keep that in mind, that's very important here. And that goes for every other pad which has a hole in it right here, which are called vias here. So this is where our battery would connect. Now in the packaging, they also provide you with a low ESR capacitor, which I highly recommend you add because there's a lot of components on here that are not going to be very friendly with noise. So definitely recommend adding the low ESR capacitor here. And I think they give you a Rubicon in this. Yeah, they do. So they give us a proper low ESR capacitor. It's a Rubicon, I think 35 volt. Let's double check, 35 volt 470, which is really great. That's gonna be good for 6S. And uh, the way to connect this, if you don't know, after you install your XT60, this side where the minus is, that's gonna go to the ground. So you see that this is gonna be the ground. The short lead here, and that would be installed here with your wire, and the positive would be installed there. So and again, this is the ground, it'll connect there. 
and the other one obviously is going to connect to the positive so keep that in mind they also give us some standoffs and some rubber gaskets o-rings in a way i've never seen any of any of them like this before they're just pretty basic so uh that's that's still nice that they've done that so that's really great that they've added that also you also do get the instruction manual now let's cover the uh receiver connection because this is very important because it's an f4 microcontroller unit so the s bus or fr sky receivers have to go to a specific pad and cannot go to another pad and also ibus and spectrum have a specific pad or else it'll never work let's start with fr sky s bus because that's what most people use currently so let's go ahead and see where we would connect this guy so to connect s bus you're gonna have to flip the board like this and it's going to be this area right here and it's really nice it's labeled as s bus it's very important here now if you connected s bus on here it'll work if you connected ibus here it'll never work because it does something called inversion where it inverts the signal it just basically obviously inverts it so if, if a one was a positive voltage then a one would be a negative voltage we're not going to get too technical into that but just keep this in mind so the s bus this is where your fr sky s bus signal would go here we see it for v5 now let me explain this for v5 whenever you see this this means five volt but that basically means that when you plug in a usb here this will also give power to the receiver which is really important if you want to bind it without installing your battery so this is where you would want to put your 5 volt for your receiver whether it be the i bus or the s bus so keep that in mind this is where you want to put the 5 volt and ground as we can tell is right there so that's where we put the black wire so s bus would connect down here now if you had i bus we'd still connect the ground and the 5 volt here however for the i bus signal we would connect it up here and now we're going to cover spectrum spectrum is kind of the same thing as i bus where the signal would go on r2 here and then we're going to give it 3.3 volts uh, for spectrum and then the ground is going to be down here so this is how spectrum would be connected right here now if you also have a receiver with a dedicated rssi wire or pin then you would want to connect it up here this is for the rssi as you can read this top one right there and that covers all of the receivers here. Now, the next thing we want to connect is the camera. It's going to be up here. So I'm just going to flip this over to make our life just a little bit easier here. And for camera, you need to find V in, which, which is this one right here, video input. So the V in will dictate the yellow wire of your camera. This is where the video signal would come in. And then next to it, we have the five volt, which is going to be the red wire and ground are going to be the black wire. So this is really nice that they're all right next to each other here. That's really awesome. Next we have is the video transmitter. Now the video transmitter uh, should be installed here because this is where the LC filter, the filtration for the noise and also the nine volt regulator is. Uh, so it's highly recommended you install it also in this area. Now for your video transmitter, uh, we're gonna need the yellow wire, which is going to go to VO, which is gonna be this pad right here. 9 volt is going to be the red wire of your video transmitter. Ground is going to be the black wire. Now, if you had smart audio, you want to connect it to a T pad and we have a T1 right here. So that's where I would connect my smart audio and you should be good to go into that perspective. So like this, we've covered the camera, video transmitter, and also our receivers. Next thing we're gonna cover is the ESCs. Now the ESCs, uh, especially if you're new, this might be a little bit different than usual. So if you're using standalone ESCs, not a four-in-one ESC, what you'd wanna do is you wanna get the big black and red wires, and you would install them right here to the negative and to the positive. This would give power to the single ESCs, you know, if you're gonna install single ones. So that would give it the power. And then you're gonna need the signal wire of the ESC. Usually it's gonna be with those thin wires and that would go right there on S1. So S1 would be our first ESC. Now with the signal, you might see another ground wire, like another small black wire. What you can do is wrap it around with the big black wire and install both of them right here, but you can also trim it off and you should be good. However, sometimes that could cause some issues and I've noticed that uh, previous, uh, previously on some of my old builds. So it's really recommended to kind of just uh, get the small black wire and the big black wire, wrap them together and install them on the ground pad right here and you're good. And now the same thing also for motor two, we see we have S2 and then S3, these are the signals and we have S4, well, sorry, S4 right there. Now these R4 pads everywhere, those are for telemetry. So if you have single ESCs that are rocking BL Heli 32 and have telemetry wires, that's where you wanna set those up on the S2, oh, on the R4s right here. 
and that would cover your uh, telemetry, your ESC telemetry, whether you have current sensing, e you know, RPM reading, whatever you might have, that's where it would go. All right, so now we're gonna cover four-in-one ESC connection setup. So here's a small four-in-one ESC. It doesn't, the size doesn't really matter. Hopefully, I mean, they fit obviously, but this is gonna be the perfect example right here. So in every four-in-one ESC, what we have is we have a, pause, a power leads where the battery is connected, just like this all-in-one for some reason. And we also have our motor outputs, which we're not really need to look into right now. We don't really need to look at these, uh, but we're gonna need to look at the output here and also the power here. Now there's a couple ways to install this. So as you can tell, this has a current sensor. So this will do current reading. And if we flip it over, this also has a current reading. Now the best way to actually install this correctly to have the best power delivery on your whole setup would be to give the battery voltage or the XT60 would connect to the ESC. And then these ports usually have a battery voltage and ground. Let's call these the battery voltage and ground. These two baby wires right here on the left here. This is just theoretical on this ESC, but just to give you an example. So we'll say this is battery voltage or VCC and ground. And you would take these two and you would actually solder them right there. Ground and battery voltage. Now let's just say your ESC didn't have the VCC and ground up here. Then what you'd have to do is probably cut up a small wire after you installed your XT60 here and just run two small wires to the these, the plus to plus and minus to minus that would power this whole thing up and however uh, this way the power would go straight from the battery into the motors which is much much better in terms of power delivery and for your overall components however there's also another way to do this which I don't recommend but it'll still work but you will you will have less efficiency more resistance and uh, your boards will get pretty toasty which is we would install the battery here and if we install the battery here, then you're going to want to take wires from the plus and the minus on these sides and then route them to the ESC. But that's not really efficient at all. And that's not something recommended, but you can totally do it. I've done it before. I've gotten away with it. But at the end of the day, the overall efficiency will drop quite significantly. Um, and it's just best to do it the other way where the battery goes into here and then this gives voltage to this one. Now, this one is not going to need any big wires because already the 4-in-1 ESC is handling everything. So this is how you do it if you're installing a 4-in-1 ESC. Now, after you do that, uh, whatever way you chose, we need to find motor 1, 2, 3, and 4 here. So let's just say they're the ones from the left here. So we're going to take motor one. And usually on the ESCs, they'll tell you in the documentation. So we'll say this is motor one all the way on the left here. And what we would do is just cut this off and then find S1, install it there. Motor two, find uh, S2, we'll cut this off, solder it to S2, and then S3, and then S4. Now make sure these are all correct, as you can tell. One, two, three, four. Also, the ESC orientation does matter, so beta flight can fly. So that would be set up like this. And it's very simple in that perspective. Now, for example, your 4 in 1 ESC had uh, telemetry, then you would find the RX or TX, whatever they called it, on your uh, ESC, and you'd install it on one of these R4 pads. Any of them will do just fine. These little R4s here, because they're default set up to ESC telemetry. And that's how you'd set this up completely. I mean, I don't think I've left anything out, but if you do have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. Also, everything here is linked down below. This is a really great priced product, and it's also the original product, which is really great. And, um, and again, everything's linked down below. And come join my Patreon. I'm doing a ton of these giveaways every month of premium components, so you don't miss out. This month, I only have like three new Patreons and new Patreons always get a special giveaway uh, for themselves so you have like a really high chance of winning and again everything's linked down below and I'll see you in the next one peace out guys